So let me take a step back. First of all, what is Rhino? And what, is, what is it that we're doing? And I actually wrote it on one of the boards behind me because I, I know that when I come on, I spend a lot of time uh, speaking straight from the heart. And the problem with doing so is that sometimes people that are on Monday get a different variation, a different angle, a different message than say people that are on Thursday. And like McDonald's, you can only be successful if you make the same thing the same way so everyone can understand it. Now, we're never going to be able to do that, right? Like I'm never going to be able to come out here every day and say, okay, and then on the 5th of May at exactly 2.34, it's just never going to happen, right? Like in the words of Donald Trump, I could be the most presidential president ever, but it would be simply just so boring. And that wasn't a political statement. If that got anyone in a tizzy, that's kind of a you thing, right? That being said, I always want to come out here and I always want to be able to speak from the heart and speak from the mind and share things that are pertinent and share things that are happening, share things in real time and read our message board and say, okay, this is what's going on. This person said this, let's address it. But also I have a responsibility to all of us to constantly be growing the platform because every single call that we're on, we have new people right now. We have 23 new people on this call that were never on a previous call before. In fact, today we emailed 8,000 new people that we had never previously emailed before, right? So I can't come out here and say, yeah, and then yesterday, you remember what we said? Exactly. That's why it meant today. And then tomorrow is going to be based on what we said Tuesday because the person will be like, I don't actually know what you're saying. I, I don't even know what you're doing. I was kind enough to come on and join this meeting. But obviously, you want to go ahead and, uh, and rescue people. You want to go ahead and have a plan that allows us to gather, to speak in a unison. And right off, right, right off the bat, I feel like a stranger. So I don't actually buy into your plan. And that's a really, really fair criticism. If I cannot speak to this, if I cannot speak to someone who's joining us for the first time, and speak to someone simultaneously that's joining us for the hundredth time that I'm the problem, right? Like I have to be able, and not that I have to be able to because I do it more than anybody. I have to be able to say, okay, these are the things we're good at. These are the things we're bad at. These are the things we need to improve right away. So in that light, I wanted to take today and kind of go through what it is that we're doing. So you'll see me look over because of course, I had to put the camera in front of the board that I wrote. Like, you know how difficult it would be to line this up directly? I somehow did it. In fact, it reminds me of who remembers Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he had to get to that cave at that exact time and put the staff exactly right there with the circle right there so that when the sun beamed through this, 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 it showed where the point was that he had to go, where the, where the ark was. That's exactly what my office looks like right now. I have a phone on a stand with a circle light behind it. And inside that circle is the board that I'm supposed to be reading right now. Oh, uh, Ted, we'll catch you later, right? So you're gonna see me do a little bit of this, right? Now, of course I wrote it, so I kind of am probably gonna run with it. But what Rhino, what Rhino attempts to identify, right? The goal that Rhino has, the challenge, the, the, the outcome Rhino attempts to create is based on a certain observation of wealth inequality. And like anything else in life, whenever someone says a sentence, follow the money, right? It's, you know, the answer to 99 of 100 problems is money. If you follow the money, you'll get the answer. It's not because it's a cute sentence. And I don't like, I don't like how today, you know, it's, it's a bit trite, right? To raise your kids and talk about money. It's a bit trite to go out and talk about money. So you don't. In fact, you even take it to the next level to go ahead and dismiss money, which is taking it too far because you can never dismiss money. Because what does money represent? Money represents the freedom for the owner of that money to do what it is that they want to do. It gives them the freedom. In fact, if you said um, what dependence is, dependence would be opposite of money, right? Like if I have $1 trillion, there's not a single thing that I can't do. In fact, I could probably walk up to someone in the street, shoot them in the head, and somehow be found not guilty, 
because I have so much money that I obviously knew that person, that person knows that person. This person's gonna get paid, this person, this person, this person. They now have generational worth, all to say that somebody saw that person attack me first, right? Now, if I had no money, if I was just like a bum and I did the same thing, I'd be arrested in two seconds. I, I wouldn't even have a trial. It would just be like, all right, guilty. Oh, public, guilty. So even when you take a look at something like so, so silly of an example as like a capital crime, money even, even goes ahead and uh, affects that. So when you're looking, when you're looking at an, um, a society of wealth and equality, well, how large is that wealth inequality? Like, what's the gap? What's the divergence? Because the larger that divergence is, is the more systematically impossible and more systematically difficult that economy, that society is for any participant in it that does not have the wealth, right? So say, for instance, you have a group of 100 people and all 100 people each have $1. So the group is worth $100. Well, do you need to know anything about any one of them to know that that's a fair group? Each one of them has a dollar, right? Each one of them can represent themselves in the same exact fashion. Each one of them, their vote matters equal. Everything is equal. In fact, if somebody, if some, hey, what's up? If somebody walked in and, and, and say this group of 100 passed a hot dog vendor and the hot dog vendor only had five hot dogs, can we say which one of those 100 are going to get those five hot dogs? We couldn't, there's, there's just no way to know. All you know is there's a hundred people with a hundred dollars and each one has one dollar. That's all you would be able to know. Each step, five minutes or less. Uh, short step, seven. yeah, yeah, Ron. So we're going to do more of that, but right now I'm just, I'm just going, right? And I love Ron, by the way. In fact, Ron said some of the nicest stuff ever to me, ever in the history of the world. In fact, when we're, we're building some more of the site that's going to allow people some type of credentials, right? Like these are testimonials. This is what people have said about Rhino, good and bad. On the list of good things, Ron is like number one. So love you, Ron, but I'm doing this right now. Anyway, you could never know. The, 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 the five people that would get those hot dogs would, would really just be at random. I mean, maybe somebody would say, well, I'm, I'm really hungry, and the, right? Whatever. Take the same example, and of those 100 people, five of them each have $15, which equals 75, and then another, and then another five of them have $5 each, right? So five have $15 each, five have $5 each, which means 90 have zero, okay? Let's just take that example, because it's really not that far from the truth, right? The reason why COVID didn't derail the economy is because what COVID exposed that no one's willing to say is that the people that were unemployed never paid taxes to begin with. They were so unimportant to the economy that the economy actually went to all time highs. Everyone that was displaced because of COVID, the millions of people that work in like bars and restaurants and entertainment and hotels and all of that stuff mean zero to the economy, nothing. You are absolutely worthless to this economy. And that's not me saying, get the stock market at all time highs. Your unemployment mattered nothing. In fact, your unemployment mattered so little that the government was able to give you money just to keep you alive so that the economy can continue what they're doing. You actually got paid not to work. That's how, that's how unimportant you are to the economy. It's like when the Yankees had Alex Rodriguez, they owed him like $30 million. They, you, you, any Yankee fan you spoke to would say, no, no, we want to trade Alex Rodriguez and pay the team to take him the 30 million. We will pay to get rid of him just because we think we're better without him, right? And I'm from New York, right? So I could say that. That's how unimportant you are to the economy. So to make the distinction of, of 100 people at 90 of them have zero dollars really isn't, it, it actually is probably true, right? Like it's very close to being true. Okay. So now these 100 people walk past the hot dog vendor. The hot dog vendor has five hot dogs. Who's getting the hot dog? Do you think that there's any chance that any of those 90 people are gonna get that hot dog? No, there's zero chance. And you could say, well, Ant, they don't really have any money. 
you know what? Give them all a dollar. They're still not getting that hot dog because those that have all of the money or the majority of the money or 90% of the money, if they say they want that hot dog, they get that hot dog. Now, I'm not saying anything that we don't know, right? The more money you have, the more ability you have. The problem is when people let the analogy die there. Yeah, if I have more money than you, I can buy more stuff. I can conceivably live a better life if measured by goods and services, right? Like maybe you find true love and I don't, but I did, ha ha. But conceivably on the basis of goods and services, I would live a better life than you. Okay, the problem is the analogy doesn't die there. You have to take the analogy further. If someone has all of the money or if a small group of people have all of the money, not only can the people that don't have money not live a good life, but they have a ceiling over them. They cannot even progress. They cannot rise higher than what is allowed of them. And when something needs to happen, when, they're, when there's a war and people need to go over to the war, or when there's a, a lockdown and people need to stay in their homes, or, or anything happens where someone needs to be forced to do something, well, guess who gets forced to do those things? It's those people. When you have such a small percentage of people with such an outsized percentage of the money, it's going back to medieval times, right? You have your kings, your lords, and you have your serfs. You don't have a middle class anymore. There's no one in the middle. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. Because as I see what I wrote, wealth inequality is good for big business and it's good for big government because government lives on tax dollars. Government is the most inefficient thing ever created in the history of the world because it's all representatives that go there and believe that the money that they come into, they're entitled to. In fact, the people that work in government conceivably could have done nothing in their life, could have done not a single job and they got elected and now they're going to tell you how to live your life. They go to government and they have people tell them what to do. It's called lobbyists. Those lobbyists are paid from corporations. Those lobbyists go to the governors and the, and the mayors and all the elected officials and say, our interests are that you do this. If you do this, we will give this to you. If you don't do this, we will give this to your competitor who will do this. What are you going to do? And those people in government will say some nonsense like, well, I represent the people. I can't really go that far. And the lobbyists are way smarter than the government people because the lobbyists got those positions because they're skilled at being salesmen, deceitful. Like they lived in that life. They were tempered in that. They grew up having to fight for everything they got. They're very good at that. So they go back to the, the, the congressman and say, okay, if you can't give us 100 of what we're looking for, we'll compromise and accept 75, but you better do it. Now, mind you, the whole time they were just willing to take 75 because they know how to compromise. The person in Congress is like, all right, well, I guess I'll be forced to take this 100,000 bribe that's going through, oh, I have to write a book. And then I sell the book and he's going to buy all the books. And now I can take the money. Oh, that's how we accept bribes here. We, 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 we write books and we sell them. Yeah, no problem. I don't want to write a book. Oh, I need a ghostwriter. I'm going to give you $10, write a book. I'm going to sell it to him for 100000 Go away. Maybe one day you could do this, kid. Right? So that's what Congress looks like. So when big business and big government are partners, that's a problem for anyone underneath them. Because now not only can you not, can you not rise up in opportunity based on your income, but now you have government structure against you. And what do I mean by that, right? Taxes. So taxes on the middle class are what? Like 30%, 28%, some number like that, right? And you would say taxes on the upper class are what? 35%, they're higher than middle class, right? And they should be. Well, that's not, that does, that's not the way it really goes. Because when you have that much money, your money's in your assets. You don't, Nobody with a billion dollars has a billion dollars in their bank account. In fact, if you, if you ever know anything, go take a look at how much your bank account's insured for. It's like a, insured for 100,000, I think, right? 100,000, which means anything over 100,000, it's uninsured for, which means anyone with a billion dollars has the brain to say, well, I'm not putting a billion dollars there because if it ever went away, I would never get the billion dollars back, right? So they buy assets. 
So yeah, they'll pay 30% on their income, right? Like what's their income? Uh, oh, I, all right, I made 100,000 this year, tough year. Well, they own billion dollar yachts, right? So their money is in their assets. So they own this building, they own this stock, stuff like that. What are the rates on those, right? So if you took a look at the Build Back Better bill, inside it, there was a SALT tax. It was, I forgot what SALT stands for, but it moved the deductions from 10,000 to 80,000 on all assets that were valued over a million dollars. So now if you have all these assets valued over a million dollars and all of a sudden your tax deduction just went up 70,000 on each one of them, well, how many million dollar things do you own? Times 70,000, that's all money you now get to keep. So the 30% that you paid on your 100,000 income, all right, I'll pay the 30,000 here. Oh, you guys got me. Yeah, did we save, I don't know, like 75 million over there? Cool, good job. Oh, um, oh, I'm a hedge fund manager, right? I don't have income. I, you silly goose, I don't have income. I, I'm a hedge fund manager. It's, it's carried interest. What's your, what's your tax rates on interest? Oh, they're low. Good. Yes. That's how that works. So business and government, when they're that size, they're partners with each other because they're equally robbing the country. Now, why do they have to be partners? Why couldn't they compete, right? Like, wouldn't that be fair if business and government were able to compete with each other? Well, you can't really do that because the government has been elected officials to run the country and they own the military. And to say the, gov to say the corporations <clears throat> can't own the military, it's just like a road nobody wants to go down because you never want to kill the golden goose, right? Like if you have two kamikaze pilots, everyone dies. So what they're in partnership for rather than competition is in the population. How do we keep these guys in check, right? Because the government knows that they're elected. People have to vote them. Uh, corporations know they, they're based on profits. People have to buy their stuff. Therefore, if the people ever woke up and said, whoa, you guys are really giving it to us. You know what, guys? Everyone, let's get together. All right, see those? 1% of people over there that own everything? Well, their tax rates are this. They're taking uh, bailouts, right? You guys are taking your own bailouts. Yeah, they're doing that. Uh, they're getting bribes. They, they, they're morally bankrupt. They cheat on their wives all the time. They do all of this bad stuff. And because they do that, we're stuck with maybe collecting enhanced unemployment until it's off. And then the government's coming back and making us pay it back. All right. Does that sound fair? Does that sound fair to any of you? Now, here's the thing. Even if it was fair, it doesn't sound fair. You cannot have 1% of the people that have everything and tell the other 99% that they got it because they worked really hard. Even if that were true, do you know what the 99% have that the 1% don't? Population. They have 99% population. How many different times in history have you seen, oh, the crowd with the pitchforks or, or the crowd with the, the fire lanterns, right? They're, they're going to take them out like Maria Antoinette, let them eat cake. What happened to her? Eat, no head, right? You cannot allow a population to grow so large and have so little unless you keep them against each other. Right? Unless you remove yourself from the conversation and let them fend for themselves and fight each other, right? So how do you do something like that? All right, um, cops are racist. Now, now fight me on it. Wait, 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 don't fight me. Fight him. He's white. You're black. That cop is this. Now do that. Okay. All right, we got them going. Okay. Um, COVID. It was by China. Um, that means we have to find an Asian somewhere that got beat up. Okay. Look, 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 now they're racist. They hate Asians. Okay, we got them over there. All right, not everyone. All right, well, how about Ju Juicy Smo Yang, right? Like the, the, the actor. Let's put him back on trial and let's let people talk about that. Okay, cool. Um, Adele, she's singing. Let's let her sing over there. Oprah, she's doing this. Okay. Um, COVID cases. COVID. Oh, this is perfect. COVID. It, it's only, it, you know, people have a 99.5% survival rate, but this is good. Let's use this. Okay. So, and now I don't want to be so, 
Because again, in speaking to you, I have to sound reasonable, right? Like I can't go off the rails and give an opinion that I truly believe is true, but is arguable. Because if it's arguable, then it leaves someone to say, oh, well, Anthony's just trafficking an opinion. Therefore, he will only be able to speak to the people that agree with him. He won't be able to speak to everyone because not everyone shares his opinion. So let's keep my COVID opinion to myself. That being said, what has COVID allowed? COVID has came to this country and came to the world and affected everyone, right? And it has caused death. More than that, it's caused, it's created an opportunity. The opportunity being that to protect people against themselves, to protect the population, to protect the human race, we must go ahead and shut it down. We must go ahead and quarantine the populations. We must make sure that everyone is no longer infecting each other. We got to get a handle of this contagion. Okay, go with me here. So now if everyone has to be in less contagious situations, well, you can't go to like a like a music concert, like you gotta shut those things down. You can't go to sporting events, you gotta shut those things down. Meaning the only thing you could do is go to things that are essential, right? Like your grocery store, your drug store, somehow the liquor store got in there. Your church, that's not essential. You're, you're not allowed to go to church, synagogue or anywhere, but you could go to the liquor store, that's fine, okay. So who's essential and who's non-essential? Well, let's go back to the example of the 100 people walking past the hot dog stand. Do you think that big business that has all the money is going to let the other people get the hot dogs? No, 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 no. They talk to their lobbyists. They talk to their congressmen and say, listen, buddy, if you're shutting anyone down, you're not shutting us down. We have stockholders. We, we, have, in, we have investors. Your 401k is in our company. We have more money than we will destroy your life. But they don't say it in those words. They say, well, Mr. Congressman, I think you should really consider what your decision would be. Because we're such a large company and because we have so much money, we're able to really guarantee the safety of everyone because we, could, we have resources to clean everything and clean the clean and clean, clean, the clean, clean, the clean, 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 clean. And they probably even made a song about it. And the congressman is so dumb that they're like, oh, this is a great song. Clean, 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 clean. Yeah, that's fine. You guys are essential. We should definitely keep you guys open. Okay. Well, Mr. Congressman, now that you've deemed this essential, I think what you'll find um, is that all the reasons you kept us essential would, would really be disrupted if you kept the small businesses open as well. They're not essential. In fact, we could do it. You know what? Why don't you let them take off? We'll do everything for them. Don't eat. Tell them not even to fret. We're going to open up more stores. We're going to open up all of our Walmarts. We're going to open up all of our Targets. And we're going to make sure that we take care of all their neighborhood, all their, not customers, don't say customers, all of their neighbors, their community. We're going to make sure that they are taken care of. There's no reason for them to stay open because then you might go ahead and they don't have the resources like we do. They can't, remember, clink, 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 clink. They can't do, clink, clink, clink. they can't do that like we can. So let them stay home. They work hard. Let them stay home. Well, Mr. CEO, you know, me as a congressman, I think that's a quite a good idea. You know, you're quite a, <laughs> you're good. And that's what happens, right? So now the big business gets to stay open and the small businesses get to be shut down. But what does, what happens based on that? What does that equal? Well, now big business got way big bigger than they could have ever gotten because who were their customers? All the small business customers. Did they win them? No, they stole them. They took them. The small business didn't have a, it's not like the small business made a bad hot dog. They couldn't make any hot dog. And for the customers, the customers aren't like, I'm gonna die and never eat another hot dog. Well, I'm forced to go to the big business, but don't worry, Fred, when you open back up, I'll be right there. Okay. So what does big business do, right? So they come into all these new customers and they, and they come into all this new money. And what do they do? They cut prices so low so that 
never, ever will there be a time that any competition could ever go ahead and take them back, right? So if a big business, because like say Walmart, for instance, right? They don't buy one thing. They buy like a billion toothbrushes, right? And then they put them in all the stores. Well, when you buy a billion toothbrushes from China, each toothbrush might cost you like a penny. Okay. Well, what do they sell them for? They sell the toothbrushes for like a dollar. Okay. At this point, all the big businesses said, okay, you know what? I know we can sell a lot of toothbrushes for a dollar. But a fish today versus a fish for versus teaching, learning how to fish, how about we cut the toothbrushes to 50 cents? Because those small businesses, when they come back, they'll never be able to beat this price. And their customers who we stole from them will stay with us forever. So let's do that. So big business, not only did they have the money in reserve because they have more money than they ever knew to do with, they were able to cut all the prices so that small business would never come back. And what did government say? Well, government's like, hey guys, we're partners. Who do you think you're gonna make all the money? Listen, listen, listen. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. We're in debt, right? We're the government. We don't have any money. In fact, this country has like 25, 30 trillion in debt. We can never pay that back. This is what we're gonna do. The people, the small businesses that you put out, we need to pay them. So we're going to say that we need to make these stimulus packages, right? Like stimulus, it sounds good. We're gonna stimulate the economy. Those idiots don't know the difference. You say stimulate, they're, they're happy, they're stupid. We're gonna stimulate the economy and enhance unemployment. It's enhanced. Like, we're so sorry you're unemployed. We're gonna enhance it for you. Good, good word. We tested it, right? You tested it, good word, enhanced unemployment. So we gotta give these, these people that. But those bills that we do, we're gonna do it in the trillions. We're not gonna give them trillions. We're gonna give them like a little bit of it and then we're gonna keep the rest for ourselves. Well, we can't actually take it, right? We gotta say it's like a payment protection program and then we'll just give it to our business owners, like our friends, right? Or we know how much, we know how much we're gonna ask for, right? And we know the stock market would go up when that comes out public. So we're going to put all of our money into stocks. Oh, you know what? This is what we'll do. We'll do a, uh, an airline bailout specifically for one sector. And let's just go buy all the airline stocks. And we'll make millions on that. And you know what? What it cost us? It cost us the money that we don't have to pay back. In fact, it costs us money that those idiots have to pay back. So we give them a fraction of it. And then we make them pay back all of it. And you're going to take their job from them. So they'll never be able to compete with business again. And then they become your customer. And then they become your employee. And then when they're there, there they're, they're are lower income people. They become dependent on us. Because now after COVID, your business is gone. The inflation's through the roof. You don't have any savings. You don't have any anything. But the 1% got way richer. So when you go look for a job, you go to one of those companies, they give you 15 to $20 an hour. They tell you have half an hour breaks. You never make so much money that you could ever uh, get out of the shackles of that financial servitude. And then the government says, oh, you know what? We're going to, uh, do, do you like your social security? Uh, do you want a tax break? Do you want anything? Well, then you better be dependent on us. You better do what we tell you to do. That's the society that we're living in right now, right? And that can progressively get worse and worse and worse because how does it get better? When you allow someone to be dependent on you, they're dependent, which means there's one less person in your opposition, which means the more people that become dependent means the less people that are in your opposition. So when you do this type of an economy, and I don't want to say that like, there's this grand ruler somewhere that's smart enough to know how to do this. It's actually quite simple. It's far more simple than that. People act in their own best interest. Everyone ever does. You just have to, is there someone whose interest is you or is there someone whose interest is them? Most people's interest is self-interest. It is their own uh, prosperity. Like Rhino's a little different. Our interest is ourself, but it's because we want to go down in history as doing something. And we want to go down in history as a hero. We want to go down in history as that name where it's like, and then this guy came around and then the rest of the story begins. For us to do that, we need to do a whole bunch of stuff before that. 
So for us to be successful, for me to go ahead and for Rhino at the end of the day to be a hero of our time, we have to save a lot of people. So everything that you see us doing now, oh, it's free. It sounds too good to be true. No, it's not free. I want to go die in a blaze of glory 30 years from now, which means I'm going to do everything to work for you today. Because if I'm right and you're right and we're all right, well, then I get to like have a statue somewhere, right? So I'm probably the most selfish person you can think of. In fact, that's almost narcissistic. He wants a statue somewhere. Well, it's like when President Trump was running for president and people would say, he's such a narcissist. He only cares about himself. And I said to someone, I go, well, the job of president, for you to be a good president, like a lot of, like the country has to do good. You can't, like you can't be a good president and everyone in the country like dies or is unemployed. It, you, like they're hand in hand. And in that sense, I was like, I kind of want a narcissist to be my leader. Now, obviously there's more attributes that go with it, right? Like being a narcissist makes you prone to all these red flags that would cause you to be a bad leader. But if you're one of those unique that's a narcissist and has all the good attributes too, well, then you're simply just the most competitive person ever in the history of the world, right? So that's kind of what Rhino is. So now when you have this structure in government and society, you have an upper class, that has gained more money, right? Like they progressively have more money. They're getting bigger, they're getting stronger, they're becoming wealthier. You have a middle class that's disappearing because for you to have a small business, right? For you to have a successful small business, that's like a brick and mortar, right? That's like in your town or even, a, or even digitally, you have to be able to buy product at a certain price and all those prices are going up and then be able to sell product at a certain price to stay competitive with the next person doing it. Now, because we're all in this together, we're all competing against each other. So there are those that have been on the internet for, let's say 10 years, they have scale, right? Like they have a big economy, they have a big following. They can go buy a hundred of something and sell it at individual prices that are better than if you only bought five of them. So you can't even compete against your own people. But here's the thing. When two people realize that they're on the same team, do they compete anymore? Or can they come together and say, all right, listen, if I, I get what you're doing and I get what I'm doing and one of us is going to win and one of us is going to lose. But we're not, even the winner is the loser because they're the competition, not us. Yeah, we might, we might go ahead and compete for that last 1%, but those boys got 99%. Even if I get everything, I'm still going to get squashed by them. So how about we team up? How's that sound? Okay. So what Rhino has understood is that when the 1% is getting larger, the middle class is disappearing. The other thing that must be happening is the lower class, the lower income must be growing. Now the lower income cannot compete against the high income. The low income does not have any say in government. In fact, what you can say is that when big business and big government are partners and there's no middle class, you have a servitude class because they're dependent on big business giving them jobs and they're dependent on big governments giving them handouts, which I don't like calling handouts because it's to no fault of your own. And handout sounds like you're lazy or you're not a good worker, right? Subsidies, uh, like they give you stuff so that you could stay alive. Because here's the thing big government and big money knows. If you're on the verge of dying, then you're on the verge of revolting. Nobody wants that. So they go ahead and make sure that you have just enough to live. Because if you have enough to live, you have enough to hope. And then you have these presidents like Barack Obama, the change you could believe in, or Biden, let's build back better. And they give you like these good messages, right? Like, okay, yes. Oh, oh. I saw people crying when Obama was elected. In fact, I was the happiest person Obama was elected. That guy was so charismatic. He was such a good speaker. In fact, I still watch some of his interviews and still watch his speeches so that I can get better at talking to a crowd. But in terms of what he did, take a look at Chicago. How is a guy from Chicago, the first black president ever, and Chicago has more black on black crime and the worst crime rates in the entire nation? If you can't even take care of your own home, then I don't want to know nothing else about you. Everything else is fake, in my opinion. If your community, if you have the opportunity to take care of your community, your president, 
and you let your community kill themselves all day, then what more do I need to know about you, right? So you, so you get just enough to stay alive when you're the lower class, and that's on purpose. But here's the thing. Let's go back to the hot dog stand. Now, five people have twenty. Uh, five people have fifteen dollars each. So those five have seventy-five dollars. The next five have five dollars each. So they have twenty-five dollars. So the top ten percent of these people, right? Ten people out of a hundred people have all the money. So ten percent have a hundred percent of the money. Okay, who's getting the hot dog? Well, it's very easy to say one of them, right? Because they're the only ones that have the money. Where do they get the money from? The 90%, because the 90% have to either vote them or they have to be their customer. Okay, where are you going with this, Sam? You know what those 10% don't have? Population. They don't have it. They need it. A business cannot stay in business without a customer. A political office cannot stay in office without a vote, which means the power is always in the population. Nothing else could happen. The power is always, 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 always in the population. Which means that when the wealth distribution is so, so off base, like so extreme, it is the goal, it is the conscious goal of the top 1% to make sure that the population never is able to gather, which is what brings us forward to COVID. You're seeing it right now. You must ask yourself a question, right? Like when we were going through COVID and we still are, right? But like at the peak of it, the one thing everyone promised themselves, and I know this because I've heard it, was oh, I need to get, I can't ever just have one income again. I have to have multiple streams of income. I can never be this dependent again. I need to have an online business. I need, I need, I need to make sure that it never happens again. Then you have the reopening, you have the enhanced unemployment, you have the PPP, you have all the different social, issues, whether January 6th was an insurrection, and then summer 2020 was peaceful protest, and all this stuff. Plus, you have newborn kids, you have neighbors, you have school doing critical race theory, you have like Democrats on CNN raping little girls, you have stuff all over the place. Andrew Cuomo, Chris Cuomo, Don Lemon, and you're just like, at what point in your day do you think about, well, you know, I, I really have to be a part of a new economy. There's no point in your day because you're effectively overloaded by everything. And then Facebook and, and YouTube feed you just enough that like when you're looking for that point of like, I need to chill out, they monitor who you speak to. They monitor everything. You cannot gather on Facebook. You can't gather through a group. And that's the point of it. That's why they're so important to Congress. When you, let me tell you something, right? When you want to control someone, you have to be able to predict their behavior. So if, if the people, if the population had no method, no centralized way to contact each other, then how would they contact each other? I don't know. Neither do you. Neither does government. Which means you need to give the people a way to contact each other so that you can watch and monitor their contact. When the, reason, when the ability to contact each other is so easy, so, pre so prevalent that they don't need to find a way to do it, which means you could always monitor how they do it. So when you have Facebook, all right, how many times has Facebook been in front of Congress? Seriously. Do you think that nobody in Congress could find a single thing with Facebook? You really think, how about they're a monopoly to begin with, right? How about, uh, remember Cambridge Analytica when all the data of everyone just got stolen? Remember the elections? Remember? How about you just remember anything, anything, anything ever? Nothing's ever happened to them. Why? Because a couple of things. What do you think the conversation of Mark Zuckerberg and those people over at Congress are? Hey, guys, I help you tremendously. And more so than that, how about this? I can be your best friend or I can be your worst enemy because by the time you actually ever think to do something to me, I will have so much misinformation out about you. Well, first of all, I have all your direct messages. I know every website you're on. I know every girlfriend and boyfriend that no one knows about. I know every legitimate, illegitimate child. I know every campaign contract. I know everything about you on Facebook. So if you decide to do something, I will bury you in scandals 
before you're ever even able to say boo. Oh, huh. you have a congressman that like is clean. Right, okay, let's pretend you're clean. Does that really matter? I just had a president impeached and gone through a special Russia hoax thing with a special prosecutor for three years that was innocent. What do you think I'm gonna to do to you? Because if I can disseminate the media that I want to disseminate, and I know the behavior of everyone I'm going to disseminate it to, and then I can go ahead and mobilize them in groups and have them be rewarded by certain things here and there, I can have you removed from office like that. So if you guys want to continue doing this, try me. Or you could sit there, you could STFU, which is letters for really bad saying that I shouldn't have said, and you could just play ball and I'll make sure that I'm your best friend, right? I'll make sure that people don't gather. But if you ever think about touching me, my money, my billions, my tax rates, my anything, I'll crush you. Oh, oh, hey Google, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Hey Snapchat, hey Twitter. Yeah, we all live in Palo Alto for a reason, we're neighbors. Well, what, do you have anything you wanna tell them? All right, cool. You guys get the message, now goodbye. People need to be able to gather to ever be able to stand up for themselves. People need to, see, now here's the thing with gathering, right? When you gather, what do you achieve? Well, you're with your friends, you get to talk, you don't live with each other, you then go home. How do you pay your bills? How do you afford a lifestyle? How do you feed your kids? How do you do any of that by simply gathering? Because when you gather, you're making a plan, right? Like my plan is that I'm going to do this. Let's go do this. It'll take us a week. It'll take two weeks. Oh, you know, Sue's always late for everything. And Kevin, Kevin, where's Kevin? Ah, where's Kevin, right? Like now you're subject to people that are in charge of leading a gathering. Have you ever had kids and tried to make them walk in the same place? And they're your kids. You've spent every day with them teaching them and you still can't get them to walk in the same place. You think people that are completely ill-equipped that just happen to be personable in a gathering are going to gather people despite their economic intentions and lead them to a revolt or a revolution over a new economy? That's never going to happen. The only way you could go ahead and effectively compete with an economy, well, let's take a step back. The only way you could ever win versus an economy is to find an alternate economy that you can join. And then in joining that economy, it has to be attractive enough that it that it that it's recept that the masses are receptive to it. And then the growth of that economy allow it to compete against that economy. Then the growth allows a life of its own, right? Everyone likes it. It's a this economy serves everyone. It's better. It's uh it, it allows people to make money it allows people to invest it treats everyone fairly it gives everyone opportunity right like all these things now we didn't like we're just talking about like an economy right well then people say well i don't want to that economy i'm, I'm like i don't want to live there anymore um the one percent own everything like they treat me like shit this economy is really nice i want to go there hey do you guys want to come too why don't you come with me? why don't you come with me? why don't you come with it as this economy grows larger what happened to that economy it's built on population, on needing population. As the population starts decreasing, this economy starts falling apart because it was completely dependent on population because the wealth distribution is so extreme that those 1% own too much. They own too many businesses. They own too many buildings. They own too much. Therefore, if their customer base does not continue to grow, they lose. The stock prices go down. The, the companies start going bankrupt. If the, if the customer base starts decreasing, well, that's a whole different world of bad stuff. In which case, this economy says, all right, all right, oh, we get it, we get it, we get it. All right, let, oh, oh, let's start giving them more stuff. How do we stop this? COVID, okay, let's lock everyone down. That's what we'll do. We'll lock everything down. You know, we got to really save people against themselves. Oh, okay, good. People are home. They're going back to needing us. Okay. So this economy better be digital, right? Like you better be able to, to, to do things on the internet. Okay. What is that economy? That's what Rhino is. 
So I'm sorry that it took me 48 minutes. And it's, it's funny because I only read the top line. I even said it the whole time. Like, I'm going to just go. That's what Rhino is. Now, how does Rhino accomplish everything that I just described? Right? So Rhino is a free platform because you got to be able to invite everyone. Now, not free in the sense of like free sample, where it's like you go past the, the Chinese place in the mall and they give you the free sample. Because I, I was when I was a kid, I did this all the time. And then I, I would just go to the to the to the, get the, the rib or the Kung Pao chicken or the what was it? General Chow chicken was always. And I get it to eat it and then I'd walk away. And then I would normally tell this story by trying to recite how the lady sounded. But I feel like in 2021, someone could pull that out of context and say it sounds terrible. But you hear the voice in your head. Where are you going? Come back. You took sample. You come back. See, I already kind of did it. And you realized, well, they were never free. In fact, they were giving you the first piece and then charging you for it by the nuts and 10 pieces that they forced you to buy, right? That's not Rhino. The entire platform is free. Now, how does it entice and how does it bring people on? Very simple. Now, the most important function that you're going to need to understand for any of this to make sense is that in January 2023, Rhino Platform will transact exclusively in Rhino Coin. Now, that's a digital currency that we have not made yet, and we're not making it till January 2023 because there's no reason to. Like, we, had to, we have a ledger. We know who owns what. But to go ahead and just give it away and then allow security breaches and securities law is just a mess, right? Just know that in January 2023, Rhino is 100% Rhino coin, all transactions. Now, I don't want to, so there is something that needs to be said about that, right? The transactions can be in any currency, right? So say you're a business owner on Rhino. Well, Ant, you said it was 100% Rhino coin. Does that mean uh, people have to buy Rhino coin to buy my product and I have to accept Rhino coin? Because that's a little, like, that's a little bit too far. Well, remember what we spoke about. This economy has to invite everyone. It has to be simple. It has to be understandable. That's not understandable. That sounds crazy town USA. So the answer is no. As a business owner on Rhino, you sell your goods and services like you already would. You have a hundred, you have a shirts, you want to sell hundred dollars in shirts. The person buying the shirts has hundred dollars. They transact your hundred dollars in shirts for hundred dollars. Easy, right? There's no friction. Everything's the same. The only difference is every business on Rhino has a Rhino wallet installed on their on their business, on their company, on their website, which means all of the funds that come in, all of the transactions are closed in Rhino coin. So that business owner who collected the hundred dollars for the hundred shirts, automatically that gets converted into Rhino coin. Well, how does that get converted to Rhino coin, right? The wallet then uses the hundred dollars to buy a hundred dollars worth of Rhino coin on the free market because we'll be registered by them. The coin will be free floating. You can buy it on Coinbase, you can buy it on Kraken, buy it anywhere you want. So what does that do for the price of Rhino coin when $100 worth of Rhino coin are being purchased? Remember supply and demand, buying versus selling? When you buy something, it goes up in price. It only goes down in price when someone sells something. And the trend is if there's more buyers than sellers or more sellers than buyers, right? But if you buy it, it goes up. If you sell it, it goes down. Okay, so then very simply, very simple math, we know that the value of Rhino coin is dependent on transactions. The more buying there is, the more transactions, the more, the higher the coin goes. Now, what if that business owner says, Ant, you know, I, I, like, I like you and I, I like this thing you're doing, right? But I don't want to hold that coin. I want to, like my rent is in dollars. Maybe one day it'll be in Rhino coin, but right now it's in dollars. What do I do? Okay, well, you redeem the coin. As a business owner, you could redeem the coin one of two ways. Either you could sell it on the, on the exchange immediately, right? Like your Coinbase app, boom. Sorry. Or you can go ahead and redeem it through Rhino. And in which case we'll redeem it. We'll buy the coin right back from you. Like we have money and we'll have like, well, millions by then. So you can redeem it through us. You can redeem it through the open market or choice number three. You could do a hybrid of the two. In which case you can simply sit there and say, well, the coin's going up. Like this whole platform's in coin. I kind of like the coin. I want to own some of the coin. 
So for every, you know, I sold a hundred dollars in shirts. I want to keep $10 of the coin. Let me redeem 90 of it, but I want to keep 10 and I'm going to allow that to invest, right? Because I'm, I'm part of the platform and I'm like everyone else. And I want to, I want to prosper. Okay. Well, what essentially would that mean? That would mean that companies are holding on to Rhino coin on their balance sheet as an investable asset, right? Or as a currency. At that point, you're always doing more buying than selling, right? Because you're buying hundred dollars in Rhino coin, but you're only selling 90 of it, which means you haven't, you haven't added a uh, oomph, right? In terms of the buying behavior. More so than that, when you have companies holding on to it as an investment, now you're in a whole new atmosphere. That coin is worth leagues times more than it ever could have been because now you have a whole bunch of companies that are standing behind it. You don't just have people buying and selling and using it. You have actual companies that do business that are holding it because it's a good business decision. Okay, so we need to know that first and foremost, that the value of everything that we're about to talk about is dependent on that coin. And that coin is dependent on transactions. Therefore, everything now makes sense. What, well, e e e that coin is going to be the part of Rhino that is worth billions and trillions of dollars if we're successful, right? That is why Rhino does what it does. That is why Rhino can do everything for free because it's not really for free. Nothing we're doing is for free. We're just giving you the free sample per se. And I know I just said we weren't, right? So let me kind of just go about that because I'm getting all these different updates on my phone and just threw off my train of thought. What we're essentially doing is bringing everyone in and we're making the investment right now, right? Like we're giving out the free samples, I guess, per se. But on the back end is where all of the big reward comes from because the coin is dependent on transactions. How do you make transactions? You bring people in. Now, if our, if our total demographic, if our addressable market are those that have been left behind by this economy or those that are forced to understand that they're government dependent and they're forced to understand that they don't have an ability to have a small business, they're forced to understand that they now have to become an employee of those companies. It is those that say, you know what? I would like to be a part of a new economy. I'd like to be a part, of, I'd like to have my own business, okay? That percentage of people is 99% of the globe. Therefore, if there was ever an economy that spoke to those individuals, that economy would be quite successful because it has a lot of people to speak to. So it has that right there. That being said, how is it that we're speaking to them, right? Like I haven't gotten to that point yet. Why would anyone come to us? Well, remember the coin, right? We know that that's like the gold, like that's where you wanna be. Every person on this planet is welcome to Rhino. Every person in our belief is their own business owner. We define a business owner as somebody who has something to sell for some kind of monetary value, right? So as an employee, you might think you're an employee. We don't think you're an employee. We think you're a business owner. We think that you're selling your labor to your customer. Your customer just happens to be the person that owns the company because he's giving or he or she's giving you money and you're giving him something. You're giving him labor. That's a transaction. Therefore, you're the business owner of your own body. Is that fair? Which means you're a business owner. Or you're somebody that owns a factory or owns a service or owns a product or you teach yoga or you have some type of skill that you then market to a population who all look to um, consider your offer, right? So maybe I'm a, a yoga instructor. Yoga, not yogurt. Yogurt's delicious, by the way. Maybe I'm a yoga instructor and I'm going to videotape myself doing downward doggy and for you to participate in my yoga sessions, you have to pay $1 per month. And my business is to accumulate hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of members that are paying a dollar a month. So now I'm, 
uh, teaching yoga to 10,000 people and I'm getting paid 10,000 a month to do it. I'm a business owner that teaches yoga, right? Like there, but both require me doing, performing something of labor in exchange for a dollar, in exchange for monetary value, right? Right. Now your business, let's take it a step further. Your business is only as successful as the amount of customers you have. Because you can have the cure for cancer, but if you don't know anyone with cancer, you're going out of business, right? You need to know people with cancer for your cure of cancer to be worth anything. Therefore, your business is always dependent on your customer base. Okay. So if we understand something, if we understand that every person is their own business owner and each business owner is dependent on the customers, and 99% of the globe are living in an economy that they hate, that literally Fs them every single day and they would love nothing more than an alternative, we have something here. What if every person became their own business owner and every person bought local? They, they entered this economy and they, and, they, and they purchased, they patronized this economy. What would happen? Well, you would have a lot of transactions, but how do you do that, right? Like not everyone is a business owner. Yeah, Aunt, you said they're a business owner, but do they know how to run a business? Have they ever made a website? Do they have a logo? Are they on a marketplace? Do they know how to market? Who the hell even knows any of them? That's Rhino. So you come to Rhino and Rhino, if you have an existing business with an existing website, we put you on our marketplace for free. Let's say you don't have an existing business and you don't have a logo and you don't have a website. We have a team that's going to make it for you and put you on our marketplace for free. Our marketplace has its own search algorithm that's coded for us. That search engine bar is equivalent to a Google search engine bar in functionality because the results of that search engine are exactly our economy. Therefore, we can have hundreds of companies we could have thousands of companies. We could have 10,000. We could have 1 million companies. And the only thing that would happen is that when one of our individuals, when one of our rhinos go to our marketplace, they're going to have more options, right? So you go into our marketplace and you type in, I'm looking for intravenous nutrition, right? I'm looking for an IV solution. I'm hungover and I really, really wish I could just, you know, get that extra oomph today. So you go over to the marketplace, you type that in. If a business does that, it'll pop up. And that business, that's what the interview was for today. The business owner of every business on Rhino is going to introduce themselves to our Rhino community. Now, maybe everyone's not going to be on the calls. That's fine. They're, the replays are sent out. But when you go to the marketplace, you're going to see the video of the business owner. You're going to be in a place where you know this is us. This is who we are. This is my community. Why would I ever shop anywhere else? Yeah, COVID, you want to shut us down? I don't care. I'm here. I have a computer. I have a digital business. I can search anyone I want. We're all built the same way. <sighs> Sounds cool, right? So like, you're going to make a bazillion sales because you're getting given the market. You're getting given the traffic. You're getting given the authority, the awareness, the sites, the logo, the business, the product, the introduction, the community. That's all being given to you. Again, none of it's free. I can't create an economy by myself. I need you. You need me. We're a happy family. Who remembers Barney? Now, remember we spoke about that coin. That's the important part. Every member of Rhino gets given 50 Rhino coin every single month, no matter what, because you need to have participation. I cannot do this alone, nor do I want to be a quadrillionaire on an island by myself, because then I have to hire an army and I have to like hide because people want to take my money. I don't want that. I want everyone to have it. So everyone gets given 50 Rhino coin per month. On top of that, everyone gets given and offered the opportunity to purchase more coin because some of us have eyeballs and have a brain and can see what we're doing and say, whoa, 
I want to be a part of that. But maybe those people say, all right, and you know what? You just kind of sound good. Um, I really wish I was able to kind of monitor what you're doing. And I don't have the time to go on every call. I wish there was like a balance sheet somewhere where I could see exactly what you're doing. In fact, I wish there was a balance sheet with projections so I could see how the calculations work. In fact, I wish there was even a ledger where I could see who actually owns the coin. I wish I could see that all in real time. I wish I would be able to be able to sell the coin by simply just typing something in. If I had that stuff, man, this would sound good because I don't even know what the coin's worth, where it's gonna go. I don't know how to get on the marketplace. And this IV company you talk about that has this mysterious owner that has a video, like, does that even exist? Well, I'm so happy you asked. Let's have fun, right? Okay, so let's do a screen share and let's see what's going on in the world. And I see people are typing in the bar. I'm gonna get to all the questions. Um, we're going longer than I ever did and I'm having a lot of fun. So let's just keep doing it. All right, so you can see my screen and you can see that this is a regular search bar, right? So let's go to google.com. Okay, so in google.com, as everyone has received my email, it says distributivemarketing.com, right? So I think you're starting to get a sense of what distributive marketing is. We are marketing to you right now, right? Like I'm not, I'm not here to lie to your face. I need you, I want you. How am I marketing to you though? I'm distributing, I'm giving you everything, which means not only are we doing what we're doing, but we invented a new type of market. We're pioneering it. We're the inventors of distributive marketing. You know how I know that? because I own the site distributedmarketing.com. In fact, you know how I know that? If I went on Google and typed in distributive marketing, I see a paid ad for marketing portal. I see a paid ad for distributed marketing. And I see a company that's not a paid ad, distributive marketing. Wow, they're right there. I see that they have Rhino Coin, Rhino App, Rhino Wealth, Rhino Traffic. And I see that they're ahead of Sprout Loud. I have no idea what that is. I see they're ahead of Salesforce. That's a pretty big company. Uh, Global Newswire sounds like it's a pretty big news organization, right? So they're doing pretty good. Let's go check them out. Okay. So this is our website, distributivemarketing.com. Who is Rhino? You know, a lot of cool stuff that we offer. And again, the community and the platform is going to progressively get larger. We're going to have more icons here. Things are going good. But let's start off with, let's start off with the marketplace, right? Because I told you about this marketplace where these companies are and the search bar exists and this crazy person that like solves hangovers. All right, so let's go around our marketplace. Oh, by the way, you guys are welcome to be with me on this. So I'm putting in the search bar right now, the screen I'm on. I mean the search bar, the chat bar. Okay, so that's where I am. So these are the companies that are in Rhino Marketplace. And as you can see, there's our seal. And these are the company logos. Pretty cool. I don't know why they don't have a logo. They should get one. So they will, right? Um, it's a lot of companies. How many companies is this? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 30 companies. That's pretty cool. Um, there was five last week, just to give you an idea. Or no, five the week before, there was 24 last week. The point is it's growing. Okay. Now these, for the most part, are people just like you. People that did not have a website or a logo or anything. But now they have companies because you know what? Everyone has a dream. They have an idea. And if someone can help them just put it into like, this is what you do, they would do it. Have you ever like seriously said to yourself, oh my God, if I just had an opportunity, I would be the best at whatever that is. That's Rhino. So let's go to this mystical search bar. Okay, so what were we talking about? IV infusions, right? So IV infusions. Uh, helped in herbals, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, infusions. Oh, okay, revive infusions, right? That sounds a little bit closer. All right, let's see what they do. So revive infusions. Now, obviously I know what they do because it's Rhino Marketplace. But this person was on live yesterday. We introduced this business owner to our entire community. Um, all right, so this is the marketplace. Okay, what's their website look like? Let's check it out. 
this person didn't have a website before Rhino. This person was a nurse. And I guess you're always a nurse, right? Like once a nurse, always a nurse. Um, but this person was on the front lines of COVID, saving lives for the last two years and saving lives way before then. This person always had a dream that, you know what? I do IVs all day. I'm a nurse. If I could do IVs for the general population and show them that, you know, you can cure XYZ or you could treat XYZ by simply having an IV available to you, uh, I think that's the good I want to do in the world. That's what this person thought. That's what this person did. This website is created by us with her, right? Like it's not like we made it in a vacuum. We did it together. This is all their social links. Just take a look at how nice the site is though. This is beautiful. Oh, you want to schedule an appointment? Oh, you want to choose an infusion? Let's choose an infusion, right? How about that? That's pretty, okay. Oh, you don't know what they do? You want a cute video? This kind of states what they do, right? And then you might dance like this. <laughs> you want to contact them? You want some information? Great. Okay. But, Aunt, you know, it's a cute site. Well, it's more than cute. It's nice. But I don't know who owns this thing. Like, this could be anyone. And, you know, you have this, you have this new economy. Like, who the hell knows what you're doing? Okay. Well, let's go meet them. Why don't you walk us through? A year ago, you were into reviving infusions. A year ago, you were working as a nurse. Now you have your own business that you're ready to launch. Walk us through how that happens and what your plans are and just, I don't know, talk a little bit. <laughs> Anthony knows that I do not like to talk, but I'll do my best. Um, so I've been in... Right, because I've never done... Real person, Common. real interview, look at that. Eight minutes. In eight minutes, you're going to know exactly who the person is, exactly what the company does, and understand that they're a real person. You know what? I want to join them. I want to do something, right? Now, take that, multiply it by the amount of people that would be receptive to being a part of this. What's that number equal? How many sales does that equal? How many transactions does that equal? Well, we're going to get to that. But first, I want to bring you to Rhino University so that you can be a part of Rhino Market. Again, all free, right? Like, watch, here you go. So I'm going to share this with everyone. So, hey, Dan, I see you're writing something and I'm, I'm not ignoring you, but I'm gonna get to it in a second, right? So everyone go ahead and click here. For those that you are not on Rhino Marketplace, you should be. You wanna know what Rhino University is? There's me talking about it. And because you've been on this call with me for the last 60, 71 minutes, you obviously know what Rhino University is. Let's say you want to submit your business. Okay, I'm adding this into the chat. Look how easy this is. Your first name, your last name, your email, your phone number. Is your business existing? Do you currently have one? Or is it future? Is it something that you wanna do? What's your business name? Uh, please include some uh, information about your business or your business idea. Do you have a website? If you don't, type, you need one. Do you have a logo? Put it there. Do you need us to create the following? Website, logo, other. Please list below. Tell us more about you. This comes to our Rhino Marketplace department. We have a team that only their whole job is to go ahead and walk you through step-by-step step how to get on the marketplace. Once you're on the marketplace, then we book a call with you where you're then live with us. In fact, you saw Tanji last night. You saw Rune Monday. You're going to see Leon tomorrow. That is Rhino. We're going to be able to make sales for you, but not so much make sales, but introduce you to others. We're going to stand behind you. You're part of Rhino. This is part of Rhino. We stand behind you. Anyone that's looking for the service, keep it in Rhino. Because you know why? Let's get back to the transactions. If we're able to create this economy and keep all the transactions in the house, what does that equal? All right, so we clicked Rhino coin. And I'm going to share this link with everyone. If you'd like to follow along, that's fine. 
This is a video of me talking about Rhino Coin. Obviously, you have me live right now, but if you want to click it, knock yourself out. Rhino Coin balance sheet. Everything that I spoke of to you from different metrics to forecasts to projections all live right here in real time. So let's go take a look. Now, mind you, this is read only for you, but the entire globe has access to our balance sheet. The entire globe gets to see real time movement, real time numbers at any moment. Hey, Leon, we'll see you tomorrow. And we're gonna kick some butt. In fact, Leon, I'm giving the screen too. He's doing a shared screen, he's doing his website. Leon's taking it to the next level, so we can't wait, Leon. So this first row is dates, right? Week one, week two, week three. This row is how many views is the website getting on its best day of that week? This row is how many people are registered to the webinar. Uh, that's these calls that we do. How many people register to listen to us, to talk to us, to go ahead and see all the new companies that we're offering, right? Or not offering, but introducing. This is the number of Rhino platform members. This is the number of Rhino uh, businesses. And as we said, we have 30 now. And anyone that's on this, which we have someone on right now, would have just seen that that number changed. But you'll see that you can't change that number, but you could offer a comment. This is the number of Rhino transactions. Now, zero so far. We're projected to have 39 this week. As they come in, we're going to know. As of now, we have zero. This number will be updated at the end of the week because we have to then speak to all of our uh, marketplace members and say, how many transactions did we have, right? And that's an easy thing. Everyone just sends it in, right? Uh, this is the number of transaction volume. So the number of transactions times the transactional dollar amount equals the volume. This is how much coin is owned by the members, right? Every member gets 50 coin per month. 50 million is kept by Rhino so that we can continue growing our team. Because as this business scales, we're going to need to go ahead and pay and incentivize new employees. So 50 million is kept in house, 50 million plus the coin that's already been given away to our members equals this number of 50 million, 45,310. So as you can see, 45,310 coin has already been given to all of our members. And that number will continue to go up. This is the number of coin that's been purchased by our members. Those members that have the vision to say, I see what's going on here. I want to buy the coin in the early days because I'm still kicking myself that Bitcoin was X amount 10 years ago. It was a penny. I could have bought it, never listened to anyone. And now I would be wealthy beyond my belief, right? That's these people. And I happen to think they're the smartest of the bunch, but I'm also a little biased, right? 17,252,105 coin have been purchased so far. This is the um, literal value. So if you took the amount of transaction volume on the week and divided it by the 1 billion coin, this is the value per coin. Now, obviously, 1,000 divided by a billion is a very small number, right? This is the demand ratio. If you, if you add the coin owned by the members plus the coin purchased by the members divided by the billion supply, you will get a demand ratio. All right, there's... 70 million coin owned over only 100 billion, the demand ratio is 70%, right? Or 7%. As the amount of coin is, that's purchased, as the amount of coin owned and the amount of coin that's purchased goes up, it's going to eventually reach 1 billion. When it hits 1 billion, there is no more coin. Then people are just buying and selling the coin in the marketplace already, right? In the economy. Well, how do you multiply? How do you forecast what that coin's worth? How do, you, how do you forecast the demands for that coin? Well, if you go ahead and in real time update and uh, catalog the numbers every single week, you'll get a trend. All right. Over the last 40 weeks, 2% uh, more coins have been purchased every week. When you hit the billion, that doesn't mean that uh, buying behavior left. It just means that it doesn't exist anymore because it can't be, it can't be represented. There's no more coin to buy, but that buying behavior still is in the price because that's the amount, that's the behavior of those that want to buy it. That's their motivation level. Therefore, if you could go ahead and identify the demand ratio of anything, 
That's the multiple. That's how much people are willing to pay for it. Growth rate. Every three months, what's the growth rate from the three months prior to it? As you'll see, it's projected at 769%. As you can see, that number is every single week. As you can see, we haven't made a sale yet. Therefore, we can't actually have a growth rate, right? But we can project it based on all the numbers. More so than that, when we do start making sales, which will be this week, that growth rate will actually have a real number. Those real numbers calculate against, uh, against the prior number, in which case these numbers have a growth rate over the prior number, which has a growth rate over the prior number, which has a growth rate over the prior number. Those numbers average and then multiply going forward. Therefore, all of these projections are based on what has actually already happened. These projections just project if we continue doing things at the same rate we're doing it. That's it. So as we do good, these numbers get better. As we do bad, these numbers get worse. So you're always able to see where we're at. Lastly, this is the price of the coin. And as you can see, it's very stable. It's currently one and a half cents. Then in January, it's two cents. Then in February, it's three cents. Then in March, it's four cents. Every month in 2022, it goes up one penny till it eventually maxes out at 13 cents in December because then you have January, 2023. January, 2023, where it is when it goes live. That's when it becomes a market price. That's when the market dictates the price. This is the price that we're dictating. This is the price that we're guaranteeing. We're making the market. This is a managed market. But how are we calculating the future price, right? Weekly transactional volume divided by the total rhino coin supply of 1 billion, then multiplied by the projected demand ratio, which is rhino coin monthly member disbursement trend plus rhino coin weekly purchase trend divided by total supply. Then we multiply that by a three-month growth rate and weekly transactional volume. I know that sounded like crazy town USA to you. All it meant was all of these numbers mean something. All of them get multiplied based on their growth levels. And those growth levels just simply get extrapolated going forward to equal this price. So this green, these yellow lines mean these weeks we already finished. This green line means this is the week we're in. The next green line is January, 2023. The next and last green line is January 2024. January 2023, the coin is projected to be worth 57.7 cents. Okay. January 2024, the coin is projected to be worth 1.5 million. Now, that's a really big number. Now, I need to recalculate these numbers because as you compound that growth rate, there's only 8 billion people on the globe. I don't think we're going to have 7.6 billion of them as our members, right? But does that mean that they're not going to transact at this level? Does that mean we're only going to have 93 million businesses? Because conceivably, every member is their own business, right? So these numbers are all going to mature as these weeks go on. So let's say this value is really, I don't know, 100,000, right? Let's say, let's say this value is 15 times overestimated. It's really only 100,000. Okay, let's protect, right? Um, okay, so with that being said, it's one, it's one point, actually, let's go with January 2023, because that's, that's at least 12 months from now, and we could all handicap that. This is 57 cents. Now, I want to illustrate the importance of all these numbers, and the way I'm going to illustrate that is I need you to remember, 57 cents, 57 cents, 57 cents, 57 cents, 57 cents. What cents? Not 58, not 56, 57 cents. How many cents? I know you just said it. Okay, so 57 cents. Now, the most important uh, metric of anything, like we started, is customers. You need the people. Without the people, nothing is worth anything. So this is the amount of members that are on the platform. We have 389 members. Okay. Let's say, let's say we only had 10, right? Oh, things have gotten terrible. We only have 10 members. Okay. Do you see all those numbers change? Watch again. Watch all of these numbers. You don't need to memorize them. You only need to memorize 57 cents, right? 57 cents. The 57 cents is the 57 cents, the 57 cents, right? So let's say this goes to 10. Watch the numbers. They all changed. 
What's that number down here? 0 0.001. Remember it was 57 cents? Why did that change so much? Well, the amount of members has greatly decreased because it's not growing at the rate that it was. The amount of businesses has greatly decreased, which means the number of transactions greatly decreased, which means the amount of transactional volume greatly decreased. And then less members mean less people own the coin, which means less people are buying the coin, which means the demand, the actual value of the coins less, which means the demand ratio is less and the growth rate is less and all the other things are less, right? Now let's undo that because that number is terrifying. Um, next week we're projected at 455 members, right? Let's say we do super duper duper and it's really 600. All these numbers change to the upside, right? Did you see that? Let's do it again. 455, what was the number 57 cents? Yeah, now <clears throat> I just heard you correct me. You just said 57.7 cents. That's how in tune you are. Let's keep it up. So we go to 600. Now it's 99.2 cents. That's a big jump from 57 cents. That's like, what, like 90% higher? How did that happen? Well, if we have that many members this week, then we're growing at a certain rate that allows us that many members, which allows us that many members, which allows us that many members, right? So if you know these numbers in real time, you'll always know these numbers, right? Because how many variables are there? In any type of asset, you need to know supply, demand. Because you're right here with me with this balance sheet, you know the total supply, you know the total demand. The rest is just forecasting what that number to be worth. Now, can I say on this exact day, this coin's gonna be worth this much? No, because maybe someone sells 100,000 coin and no one buys any coin that day and it comes down. But I can tell you, this is what it should be worth. I can tell you if it goes less than that, I'm going to buy it. I can tell you if it's more than that, I'll consider it lightening up. My point is you're getting the cheat sheet for what it's actually worth. Now, what's even cooler is because it's a managed market over the next year, you have the opportunity to buy and sell at these prices while seeing these numbers, while being a part of the platform and deciding if you want to be a part of these numbers. Because conceivably, you could just sell at the 13 and never be a part of these numbers. Conceivably, you could buy at one and a half cent today and sell at three cents in two months because there's always going to be buyers because we're always gonna know the value of the coin because here's the thing, right? So we, we own the coin. The coin gets sold to the community, right? To our members. That coin gets sold at a certain rate. So as the platform grows, which it does, so say the platform grows 100% month over month, right? The coin is only released at 50% of the growth rate. So let's say 100% of the platform grew, we only grow the coin that you have 50% meaning we're always defending the demand to be stronger than the supply. We're never going to oversupply it. More so than that, the money that comes in for the coin goes to the platform. So when you go ahead and purchase the coin, basically we're crowdsourcing a new economy. You purchase the coin, the money goes into everything we're doing from growth to uh, ad spend, to marketing, to having a bigger audience, to having fancier things to grow our community larger and larger which means the money that you go ahead and invest in the coin is money that goes ahead to guaranteeing the value of the coin going forward. Meaning if you went ahead and bought a billion coin right now, and I had a billion dollars or whatever that number is to go ahead and build this platform. Oh my God. Like, oh my God. Now I don't want you to do that because it's only one and a half cents, right? I would really prefer people to buy the coin at two, three, two cents, three cents, four cents, five cents. But be that as it may, it's one and a half cents currently. What I can tell you is in January, it'll never be one and a half cents again. What I can tell you in February, it'll never be two cents again. And you might say to yourself, well, I am one and a half cent, three cent, what's the difference? Well, the difference is 100%, right? If you buy 100 coin in February, you could have really bought 200 coin in December. So you have to have a certain sense of, Where's the opportunity? If you were sitting here talking to Mark Zuckerberg, would you know, right? Like you ask somebody, if Mark Zuckerberg came to you and said, hey, listen, I'm building this company called Facebook. Do you want to get into it? A hundred out of a hundred times, people always say the same thing. 
Of course I would. It's Facebook. If I could get into Facebook at the beginning, I totally would. No, you wouldn't. Mark Zuckerberg was a college dropout who simply told you right to your face he has no intention of making any money because it's not cool. And that at some point in the future, it'll become something cool and he'll figure out how he makes money then. That was his pitch. Would you have said yes to that kid? Now it's not 100%. But you would have if you had the vision to see what he did, what he was doing. You'd have the vision to sit there and listen and say, you know what? I know who I'm talking to right now. And torpedoes be damned, I know what I'm doing. So that's the balance sheet, right? And you're able to look at it. You also have a ledger. This is updated in real time, and it's everyone that owns the coin. And as you can see, November, December. December is 50 more than uh, November, all things being equal, unless someone bought coin in December, because everyone gets 50 coin more, right? So Solomon, who purchased 3 million coin, had 3 million 50 coin. Now Solomon has 3 million 100 coin, right? John, I'm going to get to that in a second. John, we, we don't have, so all right, not to get off base, uh, three months ago, when we were building out this platform, we wanted to build to help everyone, right? So we said, okay, let's build out every company having their own app and we'll try. 500 a month for it, and we'll do all the work to make sure that they get hundreds of thousands of customers. What we quickly realized was, well, you can't actually go ahead and scale a business on the back of the people you're trying to help because inevitably they run out of money. So we said, you know what? Everything on the platform is free. We're going to develop the coin, and that's how we're going to move forward. So to give a short answer to you, John, everything with Rhino Traffic exists, except it's free. We've not only given people their money, well, actually, the money that was spent, which was only one month, we compensated in coin, but we canceled all payments and everything is free. So if you were one that bought Rhino Traffic, you'll very quickly realize that we suspended all of your payments. We've canceled them. We've given you coin and you should be happy. I think that's, I don't even, um, you can feel free to answer, please. Um, but that's the story with Rhino Traffic. So everything with Rhino Traffic just got better. And that's now what we're doing because we didn't want to take anyone's money. So that's how, this, so this is the ledger and everyone that owns it, right? So as you scroll down, you can see a lot of people own it. Right, and we could do this all day. So let's get out of there. So that is the ledger, which allows everyone to see exactly who owns coin, how much coin they own and what's the growth of it, right? Now we talked about being able to sell the coin as well. I think I'm gonna get rid of these FAQs and just, like I have a video, I don't think I need these FAQs, but anyway, um, are you ready to sell, right? This is quite important in a managed market where you don't have a free market, you can't go on Coinbase and sell the thing. Say you wanna sell it, how do you sell it? Okay, my name is Anthony. My last name is Kalashone. My email is Anthony Kalashone at rhinoresearchllc.com. My sell limit price. Oh, wow, it's a managed market. These are the prices for the next year. Oh, okay. All right, Robbie, I'll leave them now. These are the prices for the next year. So let's say I purchased coin today at one and a half cents, and I want to sell it in June at seven cents. Excuse me. How much do I want to sell? Uh, well, I own a million coin. Let's say I want to sell 100,000 coin, right? I'm requesting to sell. I've read the terms and conditions, which is exact, like I wrote the terms and conditions. They're exactly in the same way that I speak. We seek to accomplish this goal by pioneering the world's first distributed marketing platform. Then the next sentence is, what does that mean, et cetera, et cetera. So you could see I wrote it. Um, so you'll understand that is the point. Anyway, uh, I'm not a robot. All right, tractor. I always get these wrong. Like, okay, tractor, tractor. I think that's a tractor. Okay, cool. See, I'm not a robot. Submit. Thanks you for submitting. We'll be in touch shortly. That submission then goes into not only my email, but our company calendar. So when June comes around. Oh, cool. Thank you, Nico. So when June comes around, this is how each month operates, right? So of the 100% of coin that are sold, 50% goes to the company, right, to continue building. And the other 50% goes to uh, facilitate all the individual requests. So that other 50%, so say in, Ju in June, we sell 10 million coin, right? 
Well, of that 10 million, 5 million goes to Rhino and the other 5 million goes to every single individual request. Now, maybe that not that many individual requests happens, in which case the rest goes to Rhino, but that's how everyone gets paid in the coin that they're selling. If there wasn't enough buying to go ahead and purchase your coin from you, it'll likely be purchased the next month as it will be simply rolled over. But again, like anything else, as long as we do our job and we continue doing this together, we're going to be just fine. So, all right, enough of everything. Anthony, how do I get the coin? Well, actually, first, before we do that, you can be a partner. And by being a partner, you receive 10 coin for every individual that you share your link with. When you share your link, it will bring the individual directly to our homepage. When they click this button, join tonight's meeting, they will be essentially registering for our meeting, our Zoom call. Once they do that, you are rewarded 10 coin. So you can be a partner of the platform and you can receive coin for simply being a partner. And we like that. We want everyone to be a part of this. So I'm going to share that in the group. And what does that, well, it looks like this for me because I already signed up, but for you, it's going to look a little differently. That is in the group. I'll give you a second to press it. It's really easy. It's name, email, and like, okay. And I'll take a sip of water. <sighs> okay, so that's that, right? We're giving you 50 coin a month, plus you'll receive 10 coin for every person. It says it right there. All right, enough of everything. The coin, how do you get the coin? Get the Rhino coin. I'm gonna copy this link and put it into the chat because I know you want the coin. And why wouldn't you, right? So take a second, finish your partnership, click that, and I'm gonna walk you through getting the coin right now. It's like really so simple. Okay, here we go. Get the Rhino coin. Now, as you see, this is the prices over the next year, right? January, two cents, February, three cents. It's all right there for you. January, 2023, market price. Now you're able to purchase the Rhino coin in blocks of $100. Nice, super simple, right? You could buy a little bit, you could buy $100, or you could buy as many quantity of 100 that you'd like. Now, the reason it's 100 is because we do not want to participate or we don't want to encourage somebody to scrape together their last $5, right? If you do not have $100 to purchase Rhino coin, then we don't want you owning Rhino coin. And that's not because we say, oh, we're better than you. No, we're giving you coin every month, right? Everyone should own Rhino coin. But if you do not have $100 to purchase additional Rhino coin, we don't want to sell you additional Rhino coin. We'd rather just give it to you for free. Your money is a big deal. You need to be alive. You need to pay your bills. And we are not going to be a part of anyone not being able to pay their bills. We're giving you coin every month. We're giving you opportunity to earn more coin for free through partnership. That's why this is $100. But it is not $100 to mislead you to think that $100 is the normal amount that people purchase, right? As you just saw, Solomon owns $3 million. Dr. B owns $2 million. A lot of people buy a very large amount. So let's say you want to purchase a thousand, right? A thousand is 10 quantity of a hundred. Purchase. Now you'll see 10 times a hundred equals a thousand, subtotal 1,000. If I may focus your attention here for a moment, SSL secure shopping. This is the most secure fashion you can shop online. If you do not see this, you should not purchase from people. If you do see it, you should purchase. I'm obviously very biased, but I'm not biased from uh, like a forced point of view. I got to choose the security that I have on my site. I know them to be the best, so I chose them. So I'm biased because they're the best. And I'm also biased because it's mine, but I chose the best, right? Does that make sense? Check out. Am I on? incognito or something right. anyway so what is this is my email you'll put in your email information my first name is anthony what just happened all right my last name is kalashone my address is 111 rhino street 
My city is Rhino. Actually, I could give you my city. It's freehold. My country is the United States. My state is New Jersey. My zip code is 07728. My phone number is 732-8656. And these last three are not the actual number, 000. I want to continue. Okay. Delivery. Well, delivery is free because it's an email. But let me show you what you will receive a Rhino certificate. Uh, they're coming at the first of every month. Um, immediately, you'll go ahead and receive an invoice of the confirmation. Uh, so you'll receive an invoice from Stripe as well as an invoice from us. I'm trying to pull up the certificate as I speak. All right, here we are. So this is our company. Why is it so big? Okay. So this is our company seal, certificate of ownership. This certificate shows proof of ownership that this will be your name. This will be the amount of coin you own. This will be my signature, fully certified. This is a real certificate and the price of, this, of the coin. You will receive a new one at the first of every single month. It will constantly update your ownership. It will update the 50 every single month that it grows, plus whatever you purchase, plus your partnership rewards, et cetera, et cetera. Because come January 2023, when we fully register, we will go ahead and be acceptable on Coinbase and Kraken, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to see your certificate. Well, we're going to email everyone. Send us your certificate and your wallet address, and we will go ahead and send you your coin. Obviously, we have your certificate as well. So if it doesn't match, there's no fraud that's available. If you try to do fraud, you're going to be very displeased at what we're going to do to you. So don't do it. But again, we're a real company. Everything is real. All right, so that's that. Continue. And then your payment information, which I'm not going to put my payment information for everyone to see. Continue. And obviously, this will be valid for you. But if it isn't, this is what it would look like. Review and place order, and you're done. Upon placing the order, you'll receive the email immediately. Again, one from us, and again, one from Stripe. Um, you'll also then receive the certificate at the first of every month. If you happen to like want that certificate this second, that's fine. Email me. We'll make it and send it to you. We have all them. We just we don't want to send a thousand emails every single day. But if you particularly want your certificate this second, fine. Not fine. That sounds rude. No, we're happy to do it. Um, so that's really that. I mean, I, I really didn't think this call was going to go that long. It's been an hour and forty minutes, but I I, I know what we're doing. Like I really. This, I can't express enough. Like, I need you to be a part of this. Everyone needs to be a part of this. I can't do this alone, but I can promise you, well, this is what I can promise you, right? Because I know the numbers and because I know what we're going to do, anyone that owns any Rhino coin a year from now, God forbid, two years from now, we're all going to say the same thing. Oh my God, that was the best thing I've ever done. I wish I could own more. I own only 100,000. It's worth 100000 now. I'm whatever. I'm worth a million dollars or $100 million, whatever that number comes out to, which is great. But I had the opportunity to buy it at one and a half cents. Oh, my God. If I could have done that. Now, mind you, it doesn't say one and a half cents when you're doing your purchasing. It just says the amount of coin you're purchasing. You could do the math, right? $100 divided by one and a half cents means you're going to be credited with 6,666 coin, 0.67. Right. The reason that the, the price isn't there is because it's a managed market. You could say, OK, I bought it on 1117 and it was worth one and a half cents. You could correspond that together. Right. So there's no reason for us to extra complicate things. You'll receive this certificate every month. You could do the math. You know the calendar and there's a paper trail. Everyone knows the date you purchased. Everyone knows the price of it there. They match. You know, it's like Apple, Apple. Right. OK. Anyway. Um, but yeah, you're going to sit there and you're like, oh my God, it was only one and a half cents. I wish, I wish, I wish. And you're going to say the same. Oh my God, I know it. Anthony, if I had a time machine, what I would do? Well, I'm here to actually offer you that time machine. Because I know what you're going to say, because I know what we're going to do, because I know how happy you're going to be. I'm telling you right now. I'm not going to push you hard. This video, I, I really like this video. I'm probably just going to put it on the front page. So I know I'm talking to a lot of people right now. Um, you should do it. 
I don't really know what else to say. You should do it. And if you don't, fine. If you want to stick around and watch the company build, that's fine too. That price will always go up. And that means you can always progressively get less and less. And when it becomes January next year, 2023, and when it becomes January 20, first of all, we're going to be a household name tomorrow, next year. Everyone's going to know who Rhino is. You know, let me not get into the hyperbole and the excitement. I wanted to keep this completely objective. I feel like I did express um, logic. And I feel like I did walk everyone through a step-by-step. -step. And I feel like if you have the gift of vision, then the rest is the rest. Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and pull up this chat function and see what we got. All right, hello, 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 good afternoon. Fed has a session right now. Yeah, I was watching that before. Hi, I got some feedback for you about a confused friend. Maybe a list of the best explanations for each department in a prominent location on the homepage. Yeah, Ron, Yay. thank you. Sorry, I have to run. All right, Ted, see you later. Step by step. Ron, okay. Um, yeah, maybe we'll, so I, I believe that's what the FAQ is, but we'll go ahead and actually put that on each page. You're right. Um, on how do less, okay, go ants, thank you. Now that was a good sentence. I have a chance to join alternative economy. Thank you, Nico. Dan, hey, Anthony, I've been following you for a while and I believe you are the real deal. I like what Rhino stands for and where it is going. I'm a marketing consultant and I believe in your mission. I want to help make that happen. I've already been in for the last several months as one of the 300 month founders. I'm also a Rhino partner. I want to purchase another thousand in Rhino coin and have a couple of questions for you. Okay. Um, Dan, are you still on? Let me see. Uh, no, Dan's no longer with us. Oh, he gave me his number and stuff. All right, so I'm going to call him. So let me write that down. Um, I don't think I, well, actually, he said it to host. Oh, okay, only I can see that. All right, good. I'm writing it down as we speak, which is why people see me lean over. I have his email and his phone number. All right, cool. Um, hey, Anthony, I have to run. See you tomorrow. Yeah, Leon's going to be tomorrow. He's going to kick so much butt. John, I hope I answered your question. I didn't see you follow up, so I suspect I did. Um, and cool. All right. So that's that. That is for today. Tomorrow is Wednesday, is Thursday. Two o'clock, we'll have Leon from Australia, and he's as cool as can be. And we'll send out the email in the morning introducing him and introducing his company. And everyone, please be on. Uh, anyone have any questions before I go? Okay. Love you all. And I am going to put this on my front page. So for those that are watching this for the first time and simply found your way to us, welcome. All right, guys. Bye.